Mr. John Swinney. Mr. Swinney, thank you for joining us. Uh, beyond your wildest dreams? Yes, bluntly. Uh, even when I saw the exit poll last night, I thought that can't possibly be correct. Uh, but when I saw the first result, and I saw that our candidate, well now our MP in Kilmarnock, Alan Brown, had polled 30,000 votes and had a swing of the order of 30%, I realised that we were in for an absolutely transformational night in Scottish politics. And I'm so proud of my 56 Westminster colleagues who will be coming down to make up the third largest party in the House of Commons as a consequence of what's been a really positive election campaign and a very positive and compelling message put forward by Nicola Sturgeon in the election campaign. What are you going to do with those 56 seats? Cause havoc? No, what we're going to do is do what we promised, which is to make sure that Scotland's voice is heard loud and clear here in the House of Commons. And secondly, make sure that we use our parliamentary strength to argue against austerity. And the Prime Minister, in his comments in Downing Street just a few moments ago, said that he intended to govern on the basis of respect. And I hope on the basis of that, the Prime Minister will respect the fact that people in Scotland voted for a very different political agenda to the one that he was arguing for and he needs to take that into account and respond positively to that to, to that call from Scotland. But the building behind us, you know, if we take it to its logical conclusion, uh, the SNP doesn't want it to exist as far as your country is concerned. It's, it, it wants it to be a separate state. But we accept, we had a referendum last September, indeed we discussed these issues the night after we lost the referendum in September. We accept the fact that we didn't win the referendum and we are not planning to have another referendum. So this election... That's a little porky pie, isn't it? No, it's not. That's, that's exactly so it's what not going to be in the manifesto for the 2016 well, we, we we're not planning, Scottish election? We're, we're not planning no, a no, referendum. No, that, that's, my question is, are you saying it's not going to be in the manifesto? Because well, what you are likely to say, if what you're going to say is, we have got a mandate because the fact we've got 56 seats, so as a result, the Scottish people have said they, they once again want to have a look at a, an indie ref too. No, we won't say that because what we made clear before the election uh, was that no matter how big our result was in the election that took place yesterday, there is nothing that would come out of that election that could be used to justify the holding of another independence referendum. And the First Minister said, and she, she wasn't making a prediction at this time, she said, look, even if we won every single seat, we wouldn't use that as a justification. Now, we didn't win every single seat, but we near as did it. And we certainly won't be using anything that came out of the election result yesterday as a justification for having another referendum on independence. What we said, the purpose of voting SNP, the positive reason for voting SNP, was to establish a strong voice for Scotland in Westminster and to have a strong voice against austerity. And that's what will drive the SNP MPs that take their seats in the House of Commons so next week. So just to clarify, there won't be anything in the manifesto about another well, independence we'll, we'll referendum? We'll get right in the 2016 manifesto in due course, but there's nothing that we would take That's from it. that election. And also, I should also You're say... You're not answering my question, well, well, I'm, are you? I'm just saying that we'll, we'll, there's nothing we take from the election yesterday that can be used as any form of justification for having a further well, referendum you, on independence. Why are you so scared to say that it will be in the manifesto? Well, we, we'll, we'll come to write our manifesto in due course. We've just written one manifesto and been very successful in the prosecution of that manifesto and commanding wide public support within Scotland. And in due course, we'll turn our mind to the 2016 election manifesto for the Scottish parliamentary elections. But I can give you the guarantee today that there's nothing that we will take from the election yesterday that will be used to justify a second referendum on independence. But given that you feel that the Conservatives are not a party that you can do business with, then you have 50 odd seats, you are the third biggest party, you can cause havoc, can't you? We've always been constructive parliamentarians. And first and foremost, my 56 parliamentary colleagues from Scotland, to the SNP MPs, their duty today, now, right away, is to serve every one of their constituents without fear or favour, regardless of how they voted. And they've got to now start, start delivering that on the not ground. There's a lot of blue up there in Scotland, in the, though, in is the there? Community. Well, there's not, but, there's, but what we've got to make sure is that we serve the people of our communities and that we argue for their priorities here in the House of Commons. And we do that by, uh, by being effective and responsible parliamentarians. And anyone that looks at what SNP members of Parliament have, have done you know, over the course of our history, We've had 27 of us, I was fortunate to be one of them, 27 of us have served in the House of Commons over our entire history. Well, last night, 56 got elected, and my goodness, what a transformation that is. But they will take forward the same effective, responsible parliamentary contribution that the SNP has taken forward in our history. 
Well, do you, can you envisage uh, an opportunity or a time when you might vote with the Conservatives? Well, the, the, I'm, I'm sure there'll be issues that will come forward that will command wide parliamentary support and the SNP on the issues that come forward will support causes and issues that we believe to be important legislative changes. You know, if the Conservatives were to bring forward a proposal to put the minimum wage up to £8.70 by 2020, which is what we've argued for, it would be kind of strange if we didn't support that. So, but crucially, the, 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 the issue that the election turned on for us and for Scotland was the question of austerity. We said that austerity should come to an end and we have no common pur purpose with the Conservatives on that point and we'll argue very strongly to make sure the Conservatives respect the view of the people of Scotland that we should bring austerity to an end. How disappointed were you that Ed Mill Band didn't do better than he did? I think it's a, a, a profound disappointment that we're going to have a Conservative government and obviously we needed the Labour Party to do better, not just in, in, in Scotland, but in England, to, ensure, to enable them to have the strength. Because that they, they would have been the kingmakers, of course, wouldn't you? Well, but, but not but, anymore. But what, what we would have been, we would have been part of a progressive coalition to keep the Tories out of office and to end austerity. That's what we came into this election to try to achieve, to end austerity. But we needed the Labour Party to perform better in England than they were able to perform. And that's a matter for the Labour Party to wrestle with. But I think. The people of Scotland certainly um, will need the strength of SNP representation to make sure that we can do all that we can to stop austerity in the way that we promised to the people of Scotland. So who's going to be in charge? Will it be um, Alex Salmon, who swam downstream to get down here to Westminster? Will it be Angus Robertson, who is the present leader of the SNP? Or will it be Nicola Sturgeon? Well, well, Nicola Sturgeon is the leader of the Scottish National Party, Indeed. so she is, the, she is the political leader of the SNP, but she's obviously not a member of the House of Commons. I would expect Angus Robertson to be the leader of our next parliamentary group. Angus has done a great job uh, over the last, um, well, my goodness, it must be uh, about 10 years, actually, that he's been doing that job, and he's done it extremely effectively, and I would expect Angus to carry on doing that. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Sorry about the heat here in the studio. Thank you for bearing with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. Quick look.